She was one of the most famous child actors of the 90s with starring roles in Matilda and Mrs. Doubtfire. Mara Wilson stops by to share her experiences in and out of Hollywood with this book. It's called Where Am I Now? You are here in beautiful and so much to say. <laughs> so you. much to say. Thank Let's you so begin much. With yeah. this, this question, where am I now? Everybody's constantly searching this online. Where is so-and-so yeah. now? Child actor now. Yeah. And, and it irks you. It's, I mean, I think that it's something that I, I get a lot of and I'm a bit tired of, but uh, it's, it's funny and I think that was part of sort of my, my uh, the reason that I wanted to write this. I mean, first of all, I'd been writing for several years. I had been writing comedy, I'd been writing plays, I'd been doing all kinds of writing and uh, I found that people were still interested in hearing about my life and I felt like, okay, well, maybe I should sort of reclaim my narrative because I think that it's sort of a trait that human beings have where we, you know, when we don't know what happened to someone, we make up a story. Mm -hmm. And I think that there was a lot of that and so I, I wanted to tell my own stories. When did you decide to break up with Hollywood? Uh, it was sort of a mutual breakup. When I was a teenager, Hollywood wasn't really that into me anymore and I thought Hollywood was tedious and superficial so I kind of, you know, found my way out of it. I started doing a lot of theater instead. I started, you know, doing improv and choir and just like kind of threw myself into that and I really loved it. And so I thought for a while that maybe I would study theater instead, but then I, I just realized that it wasn't for me and that mm. I, could do, I could do writing instead. And uh, that's when I started focusing on writing. So it was kind of a, a slow sort of withdrawal process, I suppose, <laughs> from, uh, you know, from when I was 13 to when I was in college. Yeah. On top of the Hollywood anecdotes, because you talk about the people who you grew up with, mm -hmm. like the Scarlett Johansons, the Kira Knightleys, yeah. and, and then deciding to leave it, you mm -hmm. also get very personal. Is mm -hmm. it cathartic to write about things like the loss of your mother at such a young age or, or being diagnosed with obsessive compulsive disorder? Yeah, it definitely is. It's definitely cathartic and I think that it's sort of like if I can help people, I have this platform. I have this built-in platform where there are so many people who grew up with me, you know, who, who knew my movies as a kid. I have this kind of, I mean, I call it a girl army, but it's, you know, regardless of gender. Uh, I have people who grew up with me and, you know, liked my movies and so I kind of want to reach out to them and say you are not alone. These mm -hmm. are, that is very much what I want to do. I think that I need to use my platform for good. And also, yeah, it is definitely cathartic and healing for me to write about these things as well. Robin Williams, we need to talk about his effect on you. Yeah, he was a wonderful man. He was just, everybody talks about him and about like he was the most wonderful guy because he was. He was so kind, so gentle, so paternal, and so funny too. Uh, he was wonderful with kids. He, you know, my, my father pointed out that even though a lot of his stand up was a bit, you know, Risque. Risque. He never once made any jokes like that around kids. He was so funny and gentle with kids, uh, very silly with them. I remember the first day we were filming together, uh, he asked me what kind of music I liked. Mm -hmm. And uh, drama nerd that I was, I said musicals. And he started singing There Is Nothing Like a Dame while dressed as a woman. <laughs> Uh, yeah, my mother, my mother thought that was hilarious and, you know, there were times where, you know, in the petting zoo scene, he fed a uh, horse oats out of my hat and then gave me the hat and said, do you want to wear it? Uh, he was just, you know, he'd make awesome. hand puppets, talk like that. He, he was so good, but with adults, he was much shyer, he was much quieter. And I think that he had that kind of, that the kind of dual nature that a lot of performers have where they are most comfortable when they have an audience. Mm -hmm. And that was definitely who he was. He was somebody who was most comfortable when he had an audience and he was definitely kind of quiet and shy in, in his regular life. But yeah, he was wonderful and he was a great storyteller and a great performer and definitely an inspiration to me and to millions of people worldwide. As are you, a brilliant storyteller. Thank you There's so, so much. much in this book. I could talk to you for days. <laughs> Guys, pick it up. It's called Where so Am I Now? Go to breakfasttelevision.ca to get it as well. Follow her on Twitter. You make news all the times with an acid tongue, which I so <laughs> adore you for because oh, you dear. just put it all out there. <laughs> uh, no, I love it because you have to. I just have to ask, who do you think won last night? I, I think Clinton was much more prepared and and uh, and very thoughtful and she said I, th I think she came across well I think that Donald Trump has a lot of sound bites but uh, can't really sustain it okay yeah uh, speaking of so follow you at Mara writes stuff on Twitter Perhaps... oh it's now at Mara Wilson thank you at Mara Twitter Wilson gave me my name oh good <laughs> they gave you your name back they gave me my name back yes perhaps running for president one day Mara oh no I couldn't do that I couldn't do that I uh, I, I think I, I'm too outspoken to be president well, it's working for Trump. That's true. That is true. Tim, over to you. Thank you so much. Thank you Good so to much. See you.